some folks aren't familiar, you know, you mentioned <clears throat> that, that he was rearrested, right? This was uh, the year 2000... Two. 2002. 2002, okay. 2002 yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So I think that, um, yeah, so 2002, and uh, eventually he was sentenced. Um, and, and I want to note that the judge that sentenced him, uh, Stephanie B. Manis, um, real piece of crap. I'm going to say that and try not to curse this time. But she's also the uh, the individual who sentenced Imam Jamil Alameen, formerly H. Rap Brown. You know, so we like to say rest in piss to uh, Stephanie B. Manis for her criminal act actions and her denying, um, you know, facts and truth when it comes to, you know, our political prisoners. Um, so you mentioned that in 2002, he was arrested primarily because of what? What was? Well, this is, uh, so after 9-11. So yeah, the, he was arrested for a case from 1971. Um, during, during that time, you understand as his daughter, um, like even knowing like once he was arrested, he was in New York and then they took him to Atlanta where that case took place, um, where the incident took place. Um, there was a, there's a part of me that completely shut down because I really felt like I like death, like my father was taken out of my life. So, um, so like where he had so many, like the supporters like yourself and just dealing with that case in Atlanta, I couldn't, I like, I, I couldn't even like comprehend what was going on because I just felt like my father was in New York and living a normal life. And then all of a sudden he's arrested and he's in court and he's taken to Atlanta. So it was again, the, the the case from 1971, and also being offered a deal to bring Asada here. And so at that time, yeah, I was just devastated. Um, and then, and my father kept like, as a father, reassuring me, reassuring, saying, don't worry, this is gonna end. This is not, you know, like they don't have anything on, you know, on me, any evidence, but it didn't end, you know, he was taken. Oh. And then sentence a life, yeah, a, a life sentence plus ten years. So. You no, know, um, it, it's it's wild because um, right now, a lot of folks are in denial when it comes to counterinsurgency, right? They they don't uh, they don't grasp, you know, what it's about. They don't quite understand that, you know, that they will go to extreme lengths when they declare war on you. It's it, it's it's for life. So you mentioning, you know, primarily we know you said the case in 1971. No, we know that it's because of the fact that she he wouldn't turn on Asada. We're clear. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't. And, and that right there is honorable because you have so many folks who would trade. Whoever's lives, whoever's freedom, you know, um, in, in, a, in a drop of a hat. You know, so we we honor and respect the fact that uh, he's steadfast and he's been steadfast because we know that that wasn't the first time that there was attempts to capture uh, Asada as well. We know that there were snakes like Al Sharpton who came in and tried to uh, finesse certain situations to try to entrap her as well. So, you know, definitely, you know, we salute uh, your father for for being steadfast. Um, Raphael, for for you, you know, you're on the committee. Um, what has that been like? And 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 what does it mean to be on a committee to fight for someone like uh, Kamal Siddiqui? I remember doing a, an interview here in Atlanta um, and it was with one of these Fox News affiliates. And at the time I was uh, I was asked to speak um, on behalf of Imam Jamil. And the reporter, he was a Mexican cat, and he, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, I support the Mexican Revolution and this and that, so on and so forth. He's talking all this stuff. And then as soon as they said, okay, the mic is hot, go. The first thing they said was, first thing he said was, so how does it feel to support a cop killer? You know what I'm saying? So that was, you know, that, that was a snake move. But of course, we don't trust the press. 
we already know how they got down. So, you know, he couldn't do anything with it for you. What type of um, uh, challenges, you know, in supporting because you you mentioned that you're an educator. You know what I'm saying? Has there been any challenges? And and, and again, what does it mean to uh, support a freedom fighter like Kamal Siddiqui? Yeah, so I'll start um, with that first part about just being on this uh, coalition and on the committee. Um, you know, starting my whole journey uh, learning uh, from reading works by Brother Mumia Abu Jamal. And um, I guess just kind of drawing on the education just about the whole movement and the history. And then eventually finding myself in spaces, being able to organize and struggle for those people's freedom, uh, such as Kamal Siddiqui. I mean, it's it's been, I think an honor is kind of an understatement. You know, it's been one of those things where I've even told Cassisse on many occasions, like when she's telling me and talking to me about histories and stories, I just got to sit back and just soak it all up and learn. And I think that's important for me because I realize we won't really capture the essence, the nuances, um, as Cassisse uh, was pointing out, the the person who people close to our freedom fighters loved and cared about. Um, it's the families and the people, uh, I think, who share, you know, that life history with them that who can give us that lesson. So I think just being a part of this coalition, um, the Free Maroon Coalition, Love Not Fear, yeah, it's just been a re I, I, just real gratitude, you know, every level, every situation, even being able to do this kind of talk. Um, when I think about some of the challenges that I've endured uh, doing this work, I think the first one comes about is uh, organizing to bring Brother Jalil Montakim to where I used to work, uh, SUNY Brockport, out here in uh, Onondaga Territory, uh, near so-called Rochester, New York. And um, I think bringing him here was, I think, a first indication of what institutionalized and state repression can look like. And how, uh, I mean, in, in all honesty, people who have said for years, like, we support you, we want to, you know, promote you and um, make sure your critical work is out there. People just uh, kind of turn to sort of an immediate enemy kind of form, you know, as a result of, I think, me deciding to bring somebody to a campus who I knew was a part of uh, uh, an important part of um, Black history. And so I think uh, that's an example of um, just institutionalized repression, uh, trying to uh, shut down the event, uh, move it to different forums, uh, all kinds of uh, kind of violent and nasty, vile kind of messages. And, um, you know, by the end of the day, uh, they end up terminating me, you know, and terminating me um, as violating uh, my First Amendment rights and um, all kind of due process. So as I told you earlier, Kalanji, when we talk about this being a real struggle, you know, in a protracted struggle and uh, we're at war, you know, we have to respect that um, on every level, you know, whether it's when we're organizing to free our freedom fighters or when people in our spaces of, say, employment, et cetera, carry a different politic about this history. So um, I think that's an important example I would want to use and um, yeah, I, I can stop there. And, and I'm, I'm glad that you said that because this is something that I'm just hearing this myself. So it's not like, you know, it was a, a loaded question like, hey, tell them about such and such. You know, this is it, it's 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 imperative that folks understand, you know, that this is not it's not. Um, you know, the, the movement is not a a. You know, a, a hit and quit type thing. 
It's not a it's not for entertainment purposes. It's not for social media purposes. It's not for likes. And let me take some pictures with so and so and all of this type stuff. Indeed, this is a protract is a protracted struggle. You know, it, it, is, it is war. And, and it is and it is necessary that folks understand that when you hop out there and you say that this is what you represent, you are declaring that you are absolutely against state oppression. You are absolutely against imperialism. You're against Zionism. You're against, you know, all of these different um, levels of, uh, of of treachery that they uh, that they practice. And in saying that, it makes you an enemy to the state. 